Welcome back, animal lovers, to another preview game here at Good Luck High Five. For those of you who may not be aware, we no longer have access to our studio here at GLHF, so for the time being, I hope you'll enjoy a slightly different look for these videos as I create them from the confines of my lowly guest room. This game is Roar and Write, an aptly named Roll and Write from Galactic Raptor Games and designer Carla Kopp, who sent us this pre-production copy for review. The goal of the fauna featured forthcoming is to fawn over, appease, and ultimately gain the favor of the Animal Kingdom Selection Council so that you may ascend to become their new ruler, and to do that, you'll need the contents of this box. Inside which, with the usual caveat that because this is a preview, these are subject to change, are the game's rules. Here, in very simplified form, by way of a few stapled together sheets of paper. I'm told these will not only be nicer quality, but also improved as a whole, so I won't linger too long here. Past those are the game's council member cards, a tiny baggie of six miniature writing utensils, six dice in varying colors, a stack of personal agenda cards, and finally, the game's tearaway score sheets. Setup is as easy as a savanna breeze. Give each player a score sheet, and then depending on difficulty level, choose the makeup of your animal council. Including the notoriously picky lizards will make your game harder, as will leaving off the docile okapi. Choose one side of each given animal and place those in the center of the table so everyone can see them. Set the dice near the schwazi selected first player and give everyone one of the 18 personal agenda cards. These will contain their personal mission for this session, so as always, keep them secret keep them safe. Over the next 15 or 20 minutes or so, you're going to be rolling these dice in an attempt to corral them into some semblance of order, given the picky desires of the Animal Council. Our ridiculously adorable red panda friend here wants four dice of the same value, while our olive necklace tiger buddy wants only dice that can be evenly divided by two otherwise known as even numbers. You can only appease one council member per round, or age in this case, and since your goal is to lead these four-legged aristocrats into a new golden era, you'll want to pick a different one each age if you can. Also, because doing so will give you a lot more points, but really, it's all about the animals. Every age starts with rolling all six colored dice. Independent of everyone else, each player then chooses which dice they want to keep and writes their values on the score sheet in the corresponding age. These are your council offerings. You can choose to keep dice that work for multiple animals or just go for the one you think you can do the best with. If you have dice left over that you didn't write down, you can take one of them and write it on the top section called the kingdoms. The die you choose must meet the decree for that kingdom. For example, here, these must always increase in value as you write them down, and here you're looking for all the same number. Each kingdom is worth a certain number of points if you successfully complete it, but keep in mind that there will only be a maximum of 15 chances to do so with 25 spaces to fill. So choose your dice carefully here. If you somehow manage to complete a given animal's request before the third roll, you'll earn an appeasement bonus of either four points for doing it on the first roll, or two points for completing it on the second. These can often mean the difference between winning and losing, so weigh your options carefully. You'll get a total of three rolls in each age, with five total ages. So, does this dog hunt? Well, that depends. It's certainly a quick experience. Game time on the box says the aforementioned 15 to 20 minutes, and that's about right. It can be a little longer as you increase in player count, and that's another selling feature here. Not only can you play with as many people as you have score sheets for, but you also can play this game pretty well remotely. All your distant players need is their score sheet and a good view of the dice and animals for your chosen game. Quick and simple are obvious goals of Roar and Write, and they meet them splendidly. Games are tight, elegant, and feature very little downtime. However, the cost of this is depth. There are only 12 animal cards in the box, and while they are double-sided, you choose five of them every game. You're likely to see the same ones from game to game without a concerted effort to avoid it. What didn't work for me personally, to expand on that last point, is the game's overall feel of sameness. With five D6s and only 24 different objectives in the box, some of our later games did feel, well, certainly not rote, at least similar enough to be noticeable. Additionally, the intent of the production version of this game is to have the personal objectives not on the cards, but printed on the actual back of the score sheets. This presents two issues in my mind, and I want to be clear again, I have actual cards, so I don't know if these concerns are going to be actually valid or not. Take them as you will. First, unless the sheets are bound together in the book in a random order, the objectives are going to be predictable. Now, this may not be an issue at higher player counts, as you could rip off six or seven of them at a time, shuffle those up, and hand them
them out. But if you're going to be playing this with a partner or a small family or group, every third or fourth game is going to feel nearly identical as some number of you aim for the same objectives you did before. Compound this with the issue I mentioned earlier about there only being a certain number of animals to choose from and, well, you get the idea. The other issue I have with this is that now you can't print the score sheets double-sided to save paper and double the usage of the game. While neither of these is deal-breaking for me, it's certainly worth noting. Also, flipping over my score sheet every so often to remind myself of my objective seems... annoying? That being said, there's plenty here to love. Katie Grierson's art style is both colorful and appealing, really bringing the world of the game alive. For those of you interested in solo play, this roll and write delivers there as well, giving you the ability to play on your own. There's press your luck and some interesting choices to be made here during gameplay, all of which contributes to a delightful game that fits nicely both time and energy-wise as part of a larger session. Let's finish up with our checklist. In the box, rulebook clear and non-gender pronouns. Roar and Wright's rulebook lays out the game with plenty of examples and detailed explanations of each mechanic. It does so using the second person pronoun you to denote the player throughout. Iconography clear. Only numbers, tables, and arrows are used here, and while some of the score sheet sections aren't perfectly clear, it'll only take one game before everything clicks. Packaging well done. Unknown on this one. My pre-production copy is a small box with everything kind of jammed in there. If that's how it ships, it'll be just okay. On the table. Good representation. Not a human to be found, so we'll skip past this one on to component quality. The game's animal cards are bigger than standard size, and while the dice I have are nothing special, the production dice shown on the Kickstarter page look great. Replay value. Reasonable. With the previously mentioned caveats, there's dice involved here, so you should be able to keep playing for a while. Fun to lose. As with most roll and writes, there's little player interaction, so you don't really have an idea how everyone else is doing until the end, but also everyone's working with the same set of options you have, so there's definitely a feeling of, yes, I should have done what you did at the end as someone else's plan inevitably beats yours. Or maybe that's just me? Roland Wright excels at creating a light, quick Animal Kingdom game that also manages to provide some tense moments and tough decisions. If the theme and main mechanic are your thing, then definitely check this one out. I'm Nicholas, reminding you to help protect the game population. Always leave your cards. <laughs>Hey everyone, if you enjoyed that video, please hit that sub button and check out all of our other offerings at goodluckhighfive.com. And please consider becoming a patron of the channel at patreon.com slash glhfmagic and help us keep making reviews, videos, and podcasts for as little as $5 a month. We're also always looking for new games to review, so if you make games or you know a company who does and wants to have their game reviewed on Good Luck High Five, please reach out to us at glhf at goodluckhighfive.com and we'd be happy to take a look. You can follow me, Captain N the Game Master, on Twitter and Instagram at CaptainNGM, and follow the channel at GLHF Magic. Remember, please shop at your local game store whenever possible. Until next time, I'm Nicholas, and good luck, high five.